clubs um, were hoping them days have gone, but you know, up to last year, he was being evicted from boxing arenas and stadiums, getting into confrontations. So again, that's another high risk. You never know if you're going to go off the ball, drinking. And as he gets older, it catches up with you if you don't live the life. We know he's been ballooning up in weight over the last couple of years. And hence why he's gone to welterweight, because he can't control his weight. He can't control his discipline. So he's a skilled fighter. But it, there's so many ifs and buts right now that I can't see it happening. But let's not take anything away from him. When he was fighting a super featherweight and at lightweight, won world titles. And at light, well, uh, light, um, lightweight, he won the WBC title. Um, you know, this was back in 2012, 2013. A knockout specialist. Huge for them weights. Um, he could walk through opponents because they didn't hurt him. And he could hurt them. He had good hand speed. His footwork's always been pretty static and poor, I think. You've been able to hit him as well. He does have that shoulder roll defence, but it's nowhere near the level of Floyd Mayweather. But it's irrelevant because he was so big for the size. However, his big downfall, again, two factors. He saw the big money fights, and he, you know he, he's attracted that life, the money. He spends money as quickly as he earns it, so he needs to... Um, target the big money fights, they were all at welterweight. He's not a natural welterweight. But the reason why he fights a welterweight as well is because he can't keep his weight down. He can't be disciplined enough to make the lightweight or the super feather anymore. Now, okay, super feather's been and gone. A 31, he's not going to make that weight again. But he could make lightweight if he was disciplined, no question. And he'd be phenomenal. And look at the big money fights that he could get in that division with Loma, um, with Ryan Garcia, with Tank Davis, it'd be fantastic for him. But um, he's not going to make lightweight either. So the next, obviously, move for him would be to go to light to welterweight. And you've got the likes of Josh Taylor, uh, Regis Progre, hopefully, up and down weights. Um, they're big money fights, um, and I'd like to see him fight the world champions. He's also called Keith Thurman down to come down to 140. I don't think that's realistic at Keith Thurman's age now. That's not going to happen, but I like the fact that Broner is moving down to like welterweight because he's shown every time he moves up to welterweight, even the one fight he did win against Polymaginagi, an old, ageing Polymaginagi, I don't think he won that, and he's been exposed time and time again at welterweight. Including his last fight, you know, he was lucky to get a draw against Jesse Vargas. He got dominated by an old Pacquiao. Um, you know, he got beaten up by Madonna, um, and this was prime Broner as well. So he's not a welterweight, and the problem is he can't get away with just trying to walk fighters down at welterweight because they could hit him and hurt him and buzz him, and they can take his power. He can't bully people at welterweight, and that's his problem. And he hasn't got the hand speed or the defence to adapt. So, ultimately, as Madonna proves, Pacquiao proves, they buzz you, they hurt you, they drop you. Um, and there's not a lot you can do about it, and they kind of just shrug off your punches. So he's too small, he's only five foot six as well. He, he, you know, so as big as he is at lightweight, that size suddenly becomes irrelevant because he's not a big welterweight. So if he's going to come back, he needs to quite rightly move down to light well weight. Can he beat a prime, a prime Josh Taylor? No. Can he beat a Ramirez? No. I don't believe so. Um, he can give him good fights, but again, it all depends on Broner. It depends if he wants to get back to hungry, focused, dedicated, get away from the nightlife, get away from all the hangers on. And this is the problem. He's lacked that discipline. He, you know, he says he models himself on Floyd Mayweather, but he doesn't, because despite all the flash from Floyd, he had the discipline, he trained hard, he never was out of shape, he never ballooned up, he never saw him in constant trouble, yes he had legal, um, legal problems, domestic problems, but he wasn't constantly in and out of trouble like Broner seems to be. Um, and he's smart of his money, smart investments. And this is the problem. Broner's ultimately fighting for money now. And when a fighter does that, their days are numbered. So it's sad, isn't it? Because he's a four-weight world champion. He should be in a boxing hall of fame. But does he deserve to be? I don't think so. 
Um, I think he's burnt out too quickly. Um, and he really, sadly, didn't fulfil his full potential. As crazy as that sounds as a four-weight world champion, I believe he could have been better. But the wrong moves, the wrong money moves and lack of discipline has cost him. And ultimately, you know, he got found out against Madonna. Could he have beaten Madonna if he's fully focused? Maybe. Um, but, you know, it's a shame because I remember the Broner that beat Gavin Reese at lightweight back in 2013. The WBC champion, the number one lightweight. I think he'd come from a up to super featherweight. It was on a 10 KO winning spree. He looked phenomenal. He looked big, strong, and I thought, this guy is going to take some beating at lightweight. And then what does he do? He moves straight up to welterweight. Lack of weight, discipline, and obviously just chasing the big money. It's a foolish move. He was never a welterweight in the first place. And ultimately, he's cost him five years of his career. So it'll be interesting to see him move down light welterweight. I'm glad he's back in many ways because he, you know, he is a controversial figure. But he does get eyes on the seat. Um eyes in the and seat in the ring and in boxing so it's good but a lot needs to change you need to focus discipline trainer who's going to tell him no you can't do this adrian you know you can't eat that you can't party here or there he needs to be focused and if he, if he does that if he trains hard again if he builds himself up doesn't go straight back into a, a brown or a taylor fight builds himself up works his way out you know into the contention at light well to wait he's got a chance He's, you know, he's 31, he's still, like I said, got three, four years left if he's focused. However, sadly, I can't see that. And I fully expect in two years' time for Broner to be out the ring. He'll probably come back for another money fight, lose that, and then also lose trial. And it'll be a sad decline on what was, you know, at one point, a Hall of Fame career, no question. Let me know what you guys think. What's Adrian Broner up to? What do you think his best move should be? And can he ever come back to the heights that he reached in 2012, 2013? I don't think so myself. All right, guys, I'm out.